Welcome everyone, in this short presentation we're going to have a look at our work for WACV 2024 called Guided Distillation for Semi-Supervised Instance Segmentation. The main motivation behind our work is that producing instance segmentation annotations is a very expensive procedure as every relevant instance in the image needs to be carefully outlined and separated from its environment. Hence, we aim at reducing the amount of annotations needed to train highly accurate instance segmentation models. Some previous works propose different solutions to solve this task, mostly using knowledge distillation. Yet, these approaches do not exploit different kinds of disparities between the teacher and the students and are therefore prone to overfit to certain representations. Noisy boundaries keeps the teacher fixed during training and as such is prone to overfit the mistakes of the teacher. Polite teacher, which is the current state of the art, does not pre-train the teacher but uses an exponential moving average from the students and is therefore strongly biased towards the initial representation from the students before starting the EMA updates. Now let's have a look at the setup of our problem. We assume that we have a small labeled dataset and a large unlabeled dataset. We also have two networks which are the teacher and the student. These networks have the same meta-architecture, but have a different set of parameters, which are uh, noted uh, theta t and uh, theta s respectively. The labeled dataset will be used in the standard manner to train either the teacher or the students. For the unlabeled images, two different augmentations are generated, a weak augmentation that will be fed to the teacher to generate pseudo-labels, and a strong augmentation that is fed to the students as additional training data. Next, let's have a look at our training methodology. Our semi-supervised training pipeline is split into three different phases. First, we train the teacher using labeled data only and then freeze it. Second, in the burning phase, we train the students using both labeled and unlabeled data. Labeled data is used in the standard manner, while for unlabeled data, the pre-trained teacher from the previous stage is used to provide pseudo-labels from the weekly augmented images it receives, which are then further used as supervision for the students. Finally, during the distillation phase, we unlock the teacher and update its weights using an exponential moving average of those of the student network. The rest of the training dynamics remain un unchanged. In comparison to noisy boundaries, the third phase is missing, hence the teacher remains fixed and therefore does not adapt to the improving quality of the students. The students therefore learns the mistakes made by the teacher. For polite teacher, the teacher is not pre-trained and the training starts with the student learning from the labeled data only. This can have harmful effects on the overall training dynamics, since the students will be more biased towards local minima induced by the few labeled samples it was initially trained on. Our approach solves this problem by ensuring that the student is exposed to a diverse set of images since the beginning of its training. Now, if we look at what happens within a training iteration, we can see the teacher predictions on the weekly augmented image are filtered to provide a set of pseudo-labels. These are then matched using bipartite matching with the predictions of the students from the strongly augmented image. They will further serve to supervise the unlabeled training loss that is calculated similarly to the supervised loss. The overall training loss is weighted sum of the two terms. Our implementation is based off mask to former, in which the segmentation head predicts a constant set of binary masks and a corresponding class uh, prediction for each mask. To filter out the pseudo labels from the irrelevant predictions, the predictions need to fulfill two conditions. Third, that the predicted class is predicted with a relatively high probability, which is imposed by a threshold on the predicted class. Second, the predicted mask needs to be non-empty, which is verified using a threshold on the size of the mask, defined as the sum of the predicted probabilities of, of each pixel belonging to the foreground. Once these predictions are filtered, we can construct the pseudo-labels by one hot encoding the class prediction and separating the background from the foreground using a threshold on the predicted logits in each mask. Now let's move on to the experimental section. The figure on the right side of the screen provides a comparison with previous work in terms of mask AP on Coco. 
our weakest model, which has a ResNet 15 backbone, outperforms the previous state-of-the-art by a large margin across all annotation regimes. We improved the performance even further by using larger backbones such as SWIN and VIT. Using a SWIN large performs the best overall. For very weak annotation regimes, SSL pre-training seems to be very beneficial and achieves impressive results. For example, at 0.5% of annotations, which corresponds to approximately 570 images on COCO, we achieve 31 mask AP, which is similar to what a polite teacher achieves using 20 times uh, as many labels. This is done using uh, the Dino V2 pre-trained uh, VIT model. Also, our model with a swim large backbone outperforms the fully supervised mask RCNN baseline while using only 2% of the COCO annotations. We obtain similar results on cityscapes also, a bit in the state of the art with a large margin using the previously cited backbones. Here we can see examples of the predictions of the mask to former model with a ResNet 15 backbone on COCO when using only 5% of annotations which corresponds to about 6,000 uh, annotated images. The quality of predictions given by the model trained with the supervised data only, which can be seen on the upper row, is bad and prone to many errors. In contrast, the model trained using our semi-supervised method, as illustrated in the second row, yields much better predictions. In this figure, we can see predictions given by a model equipped with the Dino V2 backbone and trained using our method with only 0.4% of labels from COCO, which corresponds to about 570 labeled images. Even in such an extreme setting, the model still learns to generate high quality segmentations and coherent class predictions. On cityscapes, we observe similar dynamics, as is illustrated in this figure with models trained with 5% of annotations, which corresponds to about 150 images, and a ResNet 15 backbone. Training a model with label beta only yields many errors in the predictions and incoherences in the classes associated to the predicted masks. Using our semi-supervised method, as can be seen on the bottom figure, it relieves many of the problems induced by the lack of annotations the quality of generations is greatly improved. The following section provides ablation studies that validate our design choices. On the upper left table is performed a comparison between our three-stage training methodology and other distillation approaches from the literature. Our approach outperforms its competitors, namely the methods from Noisy Boundaries and Polite Teacher by a large margin, improving mask AP by 4.1 points in the first case and 3.7 points in the second, which validates our training setup with the teacher feedback being provided since the beginning of the student training. On the bottom left figure, we compare different segmentation strategies for the unlabeled images. As expected, having stronger augmentations for the students is an, essen an essential condition, as this ensures that the quality of the pseudo-labels provided by the teacher is better than the predictions of the students. Having the same images fed to both networks results in training collapse. On the upper right table, we can see the influence of the pre-training dataset on the final performance. We compare checkpoints pre-trained for classification on ImageNet 1K and 21K. As expected, backbones pre-trained with, with the bigger datasets perform better than those pre-trained on smaller datasets. Finally, on the lower right table, we compare different pre-trainings of the backbone and observe that the Dino V2 pre-trained VIT models perform significantly better than the Dieter pre-training, meaning that the robustness of Dino V2 model, models uh, at lower annotation regimes is mostly due to the SSL pre-training and not to the architecture. We also experiment with keeping the backbone fixed, but observe decrease in performance as a result. Our work is open source and available to the global community on the project's GitHub page. Thank you for listening.